Hi guys, I'm Sean. This is Alyssa. Gas is in our hearts, hearts and, and this, this is, is Internet, Internet Rabbit Hole Daily. Uh, ooh, and we are back learning more about India. Yes. This video is called Geography Now India. And you guys have been asking for it a whole lot. Yes. Himanshu sent us a link yes. through our IRH subtitles well, uh, after email. We, yeah, and after we did the other one, I realized, um, yeah, this is like the more general one, I think, because mm. we did the Indian territory, states and territories explained. If you guys want to okay. check that one out, yeah. we'll probably link it in the description if you haven't seen that yet. Well, I'm, I'm digging and, this because uh, it's, it's 19 minutes long, so yes. there's going to be a lot of good information here. So this here. is Geography Now's uh, video. Awesome. So go ahead and check them out. Obviously still have to condense it a whole lot to fit it into 20 minutes, but... Uh, yes. So... Just because whenever we watch good. one of these things, people are always like, you're just scratching the surface and we can appreciate that. But uh, yeah, it's a journey. We're so happy you guys are on that journey with us. Oh, we have finally encroached upon the giant India. Some of you have been waiting a long time for this episode. We, I'm just going to say straight up. You all know yeah. India is incredibly complex and diverse. Even Indians have trouble understanding their own country. Hmm. Obviously, I won't be able to scratch even the surface in this episode, uh. but I'll try my best. A lot of you Indian geography peeps have helped me along the way, so thank you. And without further ado, let's begin. Ooh. It's time to learn geography. Ah, hey everybody, the I'm the host Barbie. This place doesn't even <laughs> need like much of people teeth. Everybody has heard of India. It's big, it's loud, it's colorful, and most importantly, it has a plethora of confusing territorial anomalies that I just can't wait to cover. Ooh. Here we go. Mm. I like the There's little sound. Saying, India is a place where everyone is in a hurry, but no one is ever on time. First uh, of all, India <laughs> is located in South Asia, right on the Indian and Arabian Seas and the Bay of Bengal, bordered by six other countries. So close to seven, but that land bridge between Sri Lanka got oh, wiped away like 600 years ago by a cyclone. Oh, wow. divided into 29 states and seven union territories with the capital New Delhi, which acts as its own administrative unit located in the capital territory. Keep in mind, New Delhi is actually just the name of one of the districts in the capital territory made up of 11. The largest city, however, is actually Whoa. Mumbai with... Mm. New Delhi, Bangalore, or Bengaluru, and Hyderabad following after. However, the four busiest airports are Delhi Indira Gandhi International, Mumbai's Chhatrapati Shivaji International, Bengaluru's Kempe Golda International, and Chennai International in the south. Ah, you know why I'm smiling. This is my favorite part of any episode we ever make. Territorial anomaly time. India Ooh. is loaded with strange borders and deliciously complex demarcation mm. lines. First of all, what exactly is a union territory? In the simplest way I can put this, union mm. territories are places that are too distinct to be incorporated into a state, but too small to have their own local governments. Mm -hmm. The first one, of course, is the Delhi National Capital Territory, where the capital lies. Chandigarh is a post-independent city constructed to replace Lahore as the capital of the Punjab area after it was split up between India and Pakistan. Then you have the island territories, the smallest one, Lakshadweep, and the Andaman and Nicobar Islands. The Andaman mm -hmm. Islands being home to one of the last uncontacted people groups on the oh, planet. Oh, yeah. Oh, I was looking yeah. into these. I know. The fascinating other day. stuff. I was watching these videos, and then I was like, Oh, what? We should probably react to this because it's in yeah, India. Yeah. And then one of them was by Vice. I paused it halfway. So we might, we might we get could to do it. a reaction yeah, yeah. of it. Um, but yeah, I think that one was on. Yeah, I watched about the Sentinelese and then the Jar Jarwa. Oh, okay. Jarwa tribe or something yeah. is like the other one. Fancy have been hostile to visitors and are therefore left alone, as well as the Nicobar Islands, which actually used to be a short-lived colony of Denmark. Finally, the three remaining territories are former European colony towns and ports. Dadra and Nagar Haveli, Daman and Diu, which are separated by about 200 kilometers across the Gulf of Kambat, and the most confusing Union territory, the French-speaking Puducherry. Oh, whoa. Which is actually split up between no, we heard about that in the last India. one. Karikal, there's French Mahe, speaking. Yanaon, and Pondicherry. Pondicherry is strange because it has 11 enclaves within the Tamil Nadu state. Oh, and in this area, you can also find that experimental ish commune with a little bit of controversy. Look it up. And don't forget, okay. here yeah, in these yeah. states, also known as the Seven Sisters, are connected by this incredibly narrow 27 kilometer wide pathway known as the Siliguri Corridor. This pathway is like a crucial artery that completes the India puzzle. Or so hmm. you would think. Now let's discuss the juicy stuff. Now in the China episode, I already talked about the disputed areas with India, such as Aksai Chin and Arunachal Pradesh. The latter pretty much just belonging to India as it's almost completely inhabited and operated by Indians. So let's move to the other disputes. Now as of 2015, the Bangladesh episode is already outdated as India and Bangladesh have finally come to an agreement over the frighteningly mm. complex what? former enclave exclave dispute. In the end, India only lost about 40 square kilometers of land to Bangladesh and now only a few enclaves and exclaves exist. Now let's head north. Now when you try to draw the shape of India, you might want to be careful which depiction you use. Hmm. Some might use this picture, some might okay. use this, some might use this. Oh, and interesting. Don't really study very well, might use is it just me or does it look like... 
Africa. The shape. Looks like India to me. I thought Africa looks like that too, doesn't it? This, the not? point is, the whole area is like the most heavily militarized, diplomatically stressed out region on the planet. It's already had like four wars in the past half century. Basically, India, Pakistan, and to some extent China all want the entire area for themselves, although it's more of like a Pakistan-India thing. In the China episode, we already discussed the Chinese disputes with India, so I won't cover those in this episode. If you want to learn more, just watch the China episode. But anyway, this entire area was a former domain known as the princely state of Jammu and Kashmir Ooh. that was under royal Maharaja rulers all the way up until independence. Currently, this place is split up by this fenced off militarized line known as the line of control oh, between whoa. India and Pakistan. Why is this? Well, in the quickest way I can put this, okay, the British are out. We get to take your land. Uh, no, we want to be an independent princely state. Uh, we're supposed to take your land and majority of your people are Muslim, just like us, even though your ruler is Hindu as well. Huh. Hey, India? Yeah? If you help me, I'll let you secede my territory to your land with autonomy. Deal. Ha 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 ha! Your problem now! I love how Mike played India. He totally represents India. Oh, <laughs> Pakistan's capital, Islamabad, is less than 80 kilometers away from all that drama. The line of control meanders through the mountains until it stops at a point oh, called NJ9. It's going so fast. That's huge. It's hard to understand. That's all right, Can Alyssa. You explain Get what happened. Get the gist of it. With little reenactment, do you know how they got that land or whatever? Oh, I. You know, do you understand it? We'll talk afterwards. <laughs> Well, I to... This is where things get really crazy because from there you get the Siachen right Glacier, the second longest non-polar glacier in the world, and this is pretty much the dead man's zone. Non-polar After point glacier, NJ9842, what? you hit the actual ground position line, a series of military outposts that extend all the way to the Chinese border. That means everything in this area is ground zero for the Indo-Pak tension. And you know, the crazy mm. thing is there's actually literally small towns of normal, regular civilians <gasps> living in these areas high up in the mountains, many of what? which just go about daily life, going to work and raising their families. Otherwise, they have a river dispute with Nepal and various are they part of anything though the ground zero are they still is it almost both I think it would be part of India Countries as I understand it but uh for islands disputed with Bangladesh. Outside of all the dispute stuff though, India not only has the world's second largest road network wow. and three of the world's top 10 mega cities and their own space program, but they also have a copious abundance of landmarks and notable sites, way too many to list, but some of the ones that you guys, the Indian geography peeps have told me to mention include places like the abandoned Danush Kodi ghost city, Ooh. Wakanda Fort, oh. the four pillars of Charminar, the Ajanta Buddhist art caves, oh. the Alora monolithic look ruins, cool. this all looks cool. fortress, the Golden Temple, ah, yes. which feeds mm. over 100,000 people a day, the Golgumbaz Mausoleum, the Kalavantin Durg Post, Whoa. the ruins of Hampi, the hill Whoa. forts of Rajasthan, Shatrunjaya Hill, which is basically like a mecca for Jains, Jain. the temple Ooh, of the we're Bodhi supposed to Tree, learn about Jan that. Mahal, Bangar Fort, the most haunted place in India, <gasps> Mahabad Mahabad. It's almost like we could Scary. do a video on every single one of these locations. Uh, There's just so much to, to dig into. Oh, look at those staircases. Oh, I know. They're so curly. So cool. And keep in mind, just like in China, you can find a great wall of India oh. in Rajasamand. There's also Go the Panjana Temple with the largest statue in India depicting Hanuman, and at over wow. 150 acres, the Sri Rangan Ataswami Temple, the largest Hindu temple in the wow. world. Wow! And there's also that building with the so stuff beautiful the and thing, colorful. Yeah. Anyway, we could go on for centuries talking about India's rich, constructed domicile, but what it lies on top of is even more fascinating. <laughs> Now, don't make this mistake. I'm going to India. All I need are my sandals and sunscreen. <laughs> oh. Ah. Now, as the seventh largest country in the Oops. land area, India has a wide range of landscapes, climates, and elevations yeah. that all contrast from one corner to the other. First of all, let's talk about the north. India sits on the Indian tectonic plate that essentially smashed into the Eurasian plate, which in return created the largest mountain range in the world, the Himalayas. The cool. force is so strong that it's estimated that the Himalayas grow about 2.4 inches or 6.1 centimeters every year. Whoa. It's also where you can find Kanchenjunga, the tallest mountain in India, mm -hmm. or the third in the world, right on the, the plate of Nepal. Keep your up. eye on I guess these mountains. So. These are pretty much the source of most of India's major rivers that give life to the whole country. That's why India takes these mountains so seriously. You can also find the largest natural lake, Ular, up in the Jammu Kashmir area. Below the Himalayas, you reach the North Indian River Plain, sometimes referred to as the Indus Ganga. This is the most fertile part of India where the most important rivers like the Ganges and its tributaries flow. Heading a little south, you reach the Satpura and Vindhya ranges that pretty much divide North India from South India. On each side, you get the West and East Ghat Mountains, which in return creates this massive triangle thing called the Deccan Plateau. This place is moderately forest, especially in the east, in the Chotra Nagpur Plateau, where you get a section of the swampy Sundarbans that they share with Bangladesh. Check out the Bangladesh episode. Head a little west and you get the dry tar desert oh. on the border with Pakistan, as well as the Ron of Kunch known there. as the Salt lot Desert. To take in. Finally, mm. the only active volcanic area would be the Adaman and Nicobar Islands, with barren oh, islands having beautiful. actual conical eruptions and Bharatan having tame mud volcanoes. Now here's the thing, mm. although India has mud a relatively mud high volcanoes. population density, they do relatively well with maintaining their ecological footing. In fact, in 2016, they beat a world record by planting, disputably, 50 million trees in one day. They 
Burma. Also agreed to reforest about 12% of their country by 2030. The most heavily forested wow. area being the seven sister states in East India. Now, one of the factors that contributes to this would be the fact that India has the lowest meat consumption in the world with the highest population because a lot of vegetarians at around 40%. Most of the vegetarians that consume milk products. By the way, in India, when buying groceries, this label means vegetarian and this one means not vegetarian. Oh, Nonetheless, the population does That's typically cool. eat some kind of animal protein, mostly in the forms of seafood or chicken, but almost never beef or pork unless if you are part of the Muslim or Christian minorities scattered throughout the West and East areas. Now, let's talk about the role of cattle, shall we? India has more cattle and livestock than anywhere else in the world at around 330 million. And it's interesting oh, because so since cute. they have prevalent oh. Hindu traditions, the killing of cows is illegal in many of the states except for a few, and each state has varying degrees of punishment for committing intentional cow slaughter. Keyword intentional. Cows mm. accidentally get hit by cars all the time. Once Wait, so like that's for the wild cows? Like if you're eating beef though, it's like... Like if you had your own farm, it's fine. Like, is it just, it's like if you killed like a wild cat, like here, if you killed like a bear, say. I think what they're saying is that in these territories that you can't, uh, you know, farm cows, if you will. Oh, wow. I, I don't know about the eating of beef. Uh, I imagine that would be much harder to regulate, but uh, it yeah. seems like don't kill cows is basically what they're saying. Oh. That's good. Old to produce milk, it typically is released into the open to die naturally in the wild, ideally. Nonetheless, male cattle get it much worse as they are deemed as kind of useless. Some places use them as draft animals for labor. Some religious sects use them as sacrifices, but otherwise they are typically sold to the underground market for beef or hides. To this day, there are about six times as many female market. cows as male cattle in India. So that means yeah, oh, something's really? happening to the males. Nonetheless, India does have the third highest carbon emission rate after China and the US, fourth if you consider the EU. However, emission per capita, they they rank pretty low at only about two kilotons per person. Contrast that with Qatar at about 40. Uh, there are 94- So it's kind of just because there's such a big, like there's so many people that it ends up being like high, but then like per, per the person, it's actually- N Not really as bad low. as maybe as other places. Yeah. I guess it all depends on how you uh, yeah. sort of crunch the numbers, yeah. yeah. National parks, 501 animal sanctuaries across the country where you can find some of the national animals like the peacock, the Ganges River dolphin, Whoa. the cobra, the Ganges Indian River elephant, dolphin, the highest population of Bengal tigers uh. in the world, which are all highly protected. India also has the most irrigated land in the world, which allows them to become the number one producer of multiple products like millet, bananas, lemons, limes, mangoes, ginger. Chickpeas, I didn't know bananas milk, butter, came from Whoa. India. Jute, and about 75% of the world's spices alone come from What's India. What's millet? Speaking I've heard of, which, of it. I don't know food. what it is. Typically, you can find this. It's like, isn't it a grand? or something i don't know staples roti chapati and naan and i know roti and naan in the south and everybody eats rice the more commonly commercialized indian foods that we in the west grew up knowing like samosas tikka masala tandoori's and mm -hmm. my favorite india dish palak paneer these usually uh -huh. come from the northern regions of india <laughs> we mm -hmm. gotta do a video india, on food spinach and made it fat i love you guys otherwise <laughs> the west is mostly known for their chutneys and pickled foods as well as beef since there's a high number of muslims and christians the south uses a lot more coconut and has some of the best curries like poriyal sambras rasams Ooh. and tutus and the East is known for having the best desserts like peda, mishti doi, rasgula, or shondesh. Speaking of which, it's so diverse and complex that sometimes even Indian people need translators when going to different states. It's about to get ten oh. times more confusing in about three. Uh, <laughs> are you are you okay now, Alyssa? You might no. want to take a couple of deep yeah. breaths and. Uh, <laughs> There's a llama there, though. I know this has been it's intense for open. both of us, but uh, especially for you here. So, anyways, we're good. We're good. Shashi Turur once said, in India, we celebrate the commonality of major differences. We are a land of belonging rather than blood. First of all, India has a population of about 1.3 billion people and is the second most populous country in the world after China with mm. about 18% of the world's population. Wow. About 72% of the country is Indo-Aryan and a quarter are Dravidian and the majority of the remainder are mm. Mongoloid, Asian and other people groups. They also use the Indian rupee as their currency. They use the type C, D and oh, M. Oh, Gandhi's on there. Oh, wow, three the different money? plugins. The road. By the way, technically it's illegal for these banks. Oh, what are you talking about? They use three different plugins what do you mean like they've got the, the type c type d and type m oh why do they have so many that would be ones? way too confusing i've had the type uh, and a quarter are dravidian the majority of the they have are the mongoloid asian and other people groups they also use the indian rupee as their currency they use the type i think in greece it's that first one. Oh, okay type c Type C, D, and M plug outlets, and they drive on the left side of the road. By the way, technically it's illegal for All these right. banknotes to leave the country, but you guys have sent me a lot of them for fan mail for <laughs> Friday videos, so I don't want to go to jail uh -oh. again. Now keep in mind, those statistics that I just mentioned, 
Why, That's you interesting. You're not, you're is not, that with You're any, not allowed to take it out of the country. With any country? I don't think with every, every country, like but you, I guess with uh, India specifically there, yeah. You can't take the money out of the country. That's what they're saying. It's kind of like how you can't take the casino chips out of the casino. It's just a but rule. But don't people let you um, exchange it when you're back in Canada as well? Like if you went to a bank and you gave them rupees. <laughs> They'd arrest you on the spot is what would happen. I don't know. That's a good question. <laughs> like you have to exchange it before you're you You're under back. arrest. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I'm just asking are incredibly generalized. Of the Indo-Aryan and Dravidian communities, there are about 2,000 different ethno-linguistic people groups in India with about 645 district indigenous oh tribes, gosh, 52 so major many. ones. So obviously we can't cover them all, but what we do know is that the North is very different from the South. For one, mm. the North mostly speaks in languages that are all related to the Indo-Aryan branch with languages like Hindi, Bengali, Punjabi, and okay. Gujarati, whereas the South speaks a completely unintelligible Dravidian branch with oh. languages like oh, South is Canada. Malayalam and Kannada. Okay. <laughs> Canada. <laughs> Otherwise, pockets of Sino-Tibetan and Austro-Asiatic languages spoken in the far north and east. Wait, so how do they all like communicate with each other? <laughs> That's like you! It's, ah. it's, you found your soulmate. Stop. Great question. Although India does not have an official language, there are 22 recognized national languages, and of these, two are the most prevalent, taught in schools and used by government officials, Hindi and English. Mm. And very often, these two are like mixed mid-sentence. It's weird. Don't be yeah. surprised if you hear someone speaking Hindi and then suddenly finishing off We see that all the time. Like, it's like, it's up to the English. It's like, but this and I was like trying to like, why are you even trying to do that? I know, right? And the washing machine, I told them, but I said, give a Bob Saget with a chainsaw. Oh, he, of course, <laughs> he let's speaks the Hindi. One thing that goes hand in hand with India, Hinduism. About eighty percent of India claims to be Hindu, or at least part of the Hindu practicing community. Now we don't have time to explain everything about the tenets and multi-layered philosophies and practices of Hinduism. If you want to know, just talk to a Hindu person. But basically, one thing you do need to know is that Hindu-driven ideologies pretty much dominate most of life in India, everything from family to business. You will see colorful, mesmerizing shrines, temples, statues and rituals being performed everywhere, even in public. On the Bharat Mata, the mother of India, uh, statues are everywhere. She's like the symbol of India. The largest uh, Hindu pilgrimage so much to learn. Law happens every three years, rotating between four cities. Oh. In which the adherents bathe in the Ganges River and enjoy a massive festival with tens of millions of people. Wow. So you can practically see it happening uh, from space. Now, what? a controversial topic in relation to Hinduism would be the caste system, which is basically a belief that people are born into a socioeconomic life that they are destined to serve into. Today, however, the system is more fluid and loose from what it used to be from a long time ago, and thanks to economic reforms, anybody with enough drive can kind of move up the social ladder regardless of birth. Nonetheless, India is home to every major religion mm -hmm. in the world, even a few Jews, including the B'nai Menashe, an indigenous group that claimed to be one of the lost tribes of Israel. Wow! Fact, Judaism, oh, that's Christianity that's actually so cool. start in India way before it even kicked off in Europe. As tradition holds, Cochin, or Malabar Jews, migrated around 1000 BC to trade during the times of King Solomon, and in 1580, wow. Thomas, the apostle of Jesus, arrived in what is now the state of Kerala to establish the first church in India. That blows my mind. I had no I mean, I heard about Me this neither. before. Like, I this isn't the first video that's mentioned that, but there's just so many interesting connections here. Today, most Christians are found in the southwest and far east Seven Sisters regions. India also holds the highest population of Sikhs, Jains, and Zoroastrians, mostly found in the north, and the second largest Muslim population in the world after Indonesia. Most Muslims are populated around the northwest areas by Pakistan or in the east by Bangladesh. Oh, and don't forget the Buddhists. In fact, Buddhism actually started right. in India. Today, yeah. the Dalai Lama even takes refuge mm. in Tespur in the state of Assam. Oh, that was a lot of information. Ah! <laughs> Wait, okay, so the Dalai Lama lives in India? He said he takes refuge in mm -hmm. yeah, that place. Yeah, yeah. Well, because he because China has taken control of Tibet, right? So he can't be there. So he's uh, hanging out in India. You can probably get a grasp of how incredibly mixed and diversified India's population is, but what exactly holds the country together? Well, for one, you kind of have to understand Indian history, which will take way too long to explain, but in the quickest way I can put it, Indus Valley, Maurya and Gupta empires, Southern empires, Golden Age, Middle Kingdoms, a ton of new religions come flocking in, oh the North fell to the Delhi Sultanate, the South became the Vijayanagara Empire, the Mughal Empire starts, British East India Company, direct British rule, nationalist movements, independence, republic, economic liberalization in 1991, and here we are today. Wow. <laughs> Oh, yeah. ah! Essentially, India used to be made up of <laughs> around 500 smaller royal princely states, and when the British came in, they kind of exploited them to manage such a huge population. Although India is a democratic federal republic and the largest democracy in the world, the old royal families still exist today, and although oh. they have no political power- What? Oh, the old royal family Current of descendants India? of former royals. Oh, are they- do they have, like, in Britain? Like, that? They have like like ceremonial and and powers or something like I don't how know. they have the royal family in Britain and they do their royal thing. I'm not really sure. Thing. He's he's saying that they don't have any sort of I don't think legal power or anything, but no. uh, still revered perhaps. Yeah. 
power, they hold high positions of influence in their communities across uh. India. So today, technically, you could meet someone that would be considered an Indian prince or princess. Mm -hmm. Nonetheless, the biggest thing that really united Indians in the past two centuries would probably be their hatred of British rule. It was kind <laughs> of like, well, this is not cool. Yep. What do you say you and I work together in a, end this thing? <laughs> <laughs> Essentially, one good thing you could say that came out of imperialism was that it kind of stopped all the internal squabbling and unified the groups towards one common goal, to get rid of imperialism. Mm. <laughs> Indians are just proud to be Indian. I mean, a Tamil soccer player can get cheered on by a Rajasthani, a Punjabi pop star can sell out tickets in Orissa. Speaking mm. of which, all Indians love wow. movies and music. India has the second largest film industry in terms of volume, pumping out nearly 2,000 films per year. Surprisingly, Nigeria pumps out more. However, the <laughs> box office revenues gross out at only about what? $2 billion annually compared to Hollywood at over 10 billion but still it's impressive. I thought in a different video I thought they were saying in India they have a bigger production thing I think, than Hollywood. Yeah, I think I think that yeah, okay, I guess they never con uh, included the Nigerians in that one. So oh, there okay. you go. Yeah, oh that's interesting. A oh. lot of movies but not as many dollars as uh, oh. the Americans. And keep in mind, it's not just Bollywood, but it's also Tollywood, Gollywood, Hollywood, Pollywood and so on. There's okay. Like 20 oh, different so that's a little bit different. Than, than the way I've been uh, pronouncing it because Samuel instead of Tollywood, I, I've heard yeah. Sandalwood as well for that one. No, Sandalwood's for Kannada. Yeah, but which I think is tell. Tollywood is, you thought they were interchangeable? I don't think they would use two different oh, wait, terms hold on. for one thing. Yeah, which one is which? Ugh, I'm going to have to spend some more time uh, on this. Yeah, I don't know in India. Oh, and like every movie in India has at least one scene where everybody breaks out in song and there's almost always a happy ending. <laughs> Unfortunately, mainstream media has also put an aesthetic strain on many of the people as it's almost become an obsession to be light or fair skinned, causing people to go so far as to buy skin bleaching products. Some other controversies include Ouch. things like illiteracy being an issue in many parts of the country, especially in the rural areas. But I mean, come on, when your country has literally hundreds of different writing systems, go <sighs> figure. I mean, give them a break. Also, many of you guys, the oh. Indian geography peeps have asked me to bring awareness to the fact that India does unfortunately have some of the highest rates of human trafficking and child slavery. The government is trying to crack down and culture is slowly being reformed, but for now, it's a sad reality that still does exist. Mm. Hey, here at GN, we talk about the good and the bad. I'm just saying. Otherwise, sports do definitely tie everyone together as well, especially cricket, cricket. The national sport. Even though they also used to do really well in field hockey, India also oh, has a lot of their own nice. indigenous Sweet. sports like Dopkel in Assam, bull racing in Kerala, Insuknar, rod pushing what the in Rod pushing? And Malakamba, the strange pole what? gymnastics thing in the south. Otherwise, some notable people from India or of Indian descent might include people like Siddhartha Gautama, Tama or the Buddha, Mahavir, Ashoka the Great, Prithviraj Chauhan, Aurangzeb, Shivaji of the Maratha Empire, Mohandas or Mahatma Gandhi, Gandhi. Indira Gandhi, Subhash Chandra Bose, Jawahar Lal Nehru, Rabindranath Tagore, C.V. Raman, Satyendra Nath Bose, Bhagat Singh, Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam, Shah Rukh Khan, Amitabh Bachchan, Amir Khan, Salman Khan, Priyana Chopra, ah, Ben Kinsley, yeah. oh, yeah. Satya Narayana Nadella, A.R. Raman, Sachin Tendulkar, and Mahendra wow. Singh. Wow. There's also literally millions of Need other famous people I missed no out on. If you want to mention know. them, please, there's a comment section below. Use it. In the meantime, we got to finish this info marathon, shall we? You must be exhausted after all that now, uh, work here. India is huge and therefore has yeah. a huge international outreach when it comes to diplomacy to almost everyone except their immediate neighbors. First of all, countries with large population percentages of Hindus and Indians like Fiji, Guyana, Suriname, Trinidad and Tobago, Mauritius and Malaysia typically stay close to India's roster of go-to friends. They enjoy cordial relations with trade. Now the UK may have left on a sour note, but they still have a lot of ties to their former colonizer in terms of business and tourism. India is still part of the Commonwealth, not Commonwealth realm, there's a difference. And the UK has over 1.5 million citizens of Indian descent. As mentioned in the China episode, China is kind of like India's, I'm only here to do business with you and nothing else friend as drama still hasn't subsided in regards to the territory conflicts. Mm. Now, when it comes to the U.S., things started kind of sour back in the 70s during the Indo-Pak War of 1971, when the U.S. sided with Pakistan, their arch nemesis. Today, relations have cooled off. Mostly, the U.S. supports India's move towards democracy and is a key ally in the military conflicts in the Middle East. When it comes to their best friends, however, most of the Indians I talked to have said Russia and Bhutan. Russia, because oh. during the Indo-Pak Wars, Russia came in and supported them, and ever since then, each country has held a high position of respect for the other, especially as global superpowers. Bhutan hmm. and India India signed a treaty of friendship almost immediately after independence. The two countries have shared interests and a currency pegged system as well. Bhutan even supported the annexation of their cousins in the Sikkim state into India as it gave a nice buffer of land from China's stake to their claim. In conclusion, you will not find anywhere else on earth like India. Thousands and millions of people inhabiting a colorful, majestic, green, slightly gritty at times slab of earth, blessed and cursed in so many ways, yet wonderfully harmonized, mostly in a unity unlike anywhere else. In the end, that's India. Oh. Ah! Stay tuned, Indo Beach <laughs> is coming up next.
Wow. Holy well, mackerel. That puts a lot of work into Yeah, this yeah. Video. No kidding. Wow, and look at all those uh, sources there. Like the animations he does are so good. Holy mackerel. You guys can go support this uh, channel on Patreon. That would be a good thing. Well, thank you, Geography Now. We certainly thank learned you. a whole lot. I think we learned that we don't really know anything and that we've got a whole lot more to check out. I need to watch this video like in slow motion or something. <laughs> yeah, you can actually slower the speed on YouTube. Oh, yeah, now. you can. Yeah, slow it down and then have like an encyclopedia yeah. or a Wikipedia open in front of you or and something. Some but uh, if you guys enjoyed that and want to keep going on this journey with us, learning more about India, well, then we're going to ask you to click that subscribe button. Click the little bell icon. Choose all from the drop down menu so you can get updated every, every time, time we upload a new video. video. If you enjoyed this video, please let us know by clicking the thumbs up button and leaving your thoughts in the comments down below. And uh, keep checking out our email, irhsubtitles at gmail.com. That's right. This was one of the in, suggestions. Yeah, if you want to send in subtitled videos. We always love hearing from you. This is Internet Rabbit Hole Daily. IRH signing, signing off. Bye, guys. Bye-bye, guys. <laughs>